What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV, man. It's time to talk about Raising Canaan, episode nine, right? Listen, this show gets better and better as the season goes on. Seriously. Like, the, the, the performances of the individuals in this show, London Brown in particular, in this episode, London, London Brown, who plays Uncle Marvin, spectacular performance. I remember watching London Brown when he was in Ballers, but Ballers really didn't require him to have a whole lot of range, in my opinion. However, when we see him in this show, Uncle Marvin has depth and range to him. Seriously. And his character is so... He's a character who is nuanced, but he, he has so many different aspects to him, right? Watching this episode, watching his interaction with his sister, Rock, who's played by Bettina Miller, and watching his interaction with his daughter, Jukebox, who's played by Haley Kilgore, marvelous. Like, like it's, it's, it's spectacular, man. Like, I really was like, damn, this is some good-ass acting right here. Like, this is the, those scenes were so touching to me. Like, well, Bettina Miller's scene was touching, right? But... The other scene was just so it was a it was a really, really powerful scene. It was it was terrible, horrible. The scene that played out with him in jukebox. But the acting was top notch. Right. And I knew I found out Patina had, um, you know, a background in Broadway and so on and so forth. So I'm like, OK, I know she can do her acting thing or whatever. But Haley Kilgore is killing her role as ju ju excuse me, jukebox as well. Right. And I'm enjoying the whole show. Like, I promise y'all when these. Power spinoffs were announced. I had my doubts. I had my worries and concerns about it. But they are delivering without question. So episode 9 picks up right where episode 8 left, uh, left off basically in so many aspects. Where we see Uncle Marvin, Uncle Lulu has survived the Molotov cocktail attack on his house. And you know, of course they were spraying. They were shooting in his house as well. But um, we saw that Uncle Marvin came to save the day after being banished from Raquel's drug empire. He comes and saves his brother's life, brings him outside out of the out of the, uh, the the building that was set ablaze or whatever, and we hear him hollering in the middle of the street for help. We see that he's uh, Uncle Lulu is in the hospital now, recovering from his injuries, but Uncle Marvin is on a suit, not a suicide mission. He is out for blood. He is out for blood, and he don't give a damn when he do it. He don't care if it's in broad daylight. He don't care who is out here when it happens. He don't give a damn about none of that shit. He feel like somebody got to pay for trying to kill his brother. And he don't, and they're going to die at his hands by all costs. My man pull up in a parking lot where Unique and his crew is at in a van with a sliding door, fam. All the rappers, you didn't heard rappers talking about they're going to be in a van with a sliding door. He pulled up in that joint for real and had a big ass chopper, a big chopper, just spraying into the whole parking lot, spraying at Unique and his crew. And I'm like, he letting the chopper sing like Mariah Carey. Like, without, he letting it sing all day long. And he doesn't, I don't know if he realized it or not. But he was shooting at Unique when Unique was with his son in the car. He sprang up the car, spraying it all over the place. But fortunately for Unique, the car is bulletproof, right? So nothing happens to them. They have no casualties on their side. However, there's going to be some casualties after that because now Unique and Rock are entrenched in warfare. They crews are entrenched in warfare. And they don't give a, there's no rules to it no more. There's no, we're going to have no discussions about nothing. Unique even says it. Anybody associated with Raquel got to die. He don't give a damn if it's a kid, if it's a woman. He don't care their age. They got to go. Everything associated with Raquel has got to die from that point on. And then you see Unique send his, uh, his crew up to the hospital where Uncle Lulu is to finish the job. Fortunately for Raquel and Lulu and Marvin and the whole empire, uh, Detective Howard is outside. And he's watching a young lady that works in the hospital. He's watching her. Um, my voice didn't change. He's wa he's watching her basically engage in a transaction. She's handing them hospital clothes. She's handing them hospital uh, name tags. She's handing them trays to conceal their weapons in. She's handing them to these to Unique's guys so they can come in and become dressed as hospital workers to get to Uncle Lulu's room to take them out. Right? They putting silences on the gun. They professionals and they ready to deliver this hit. Right? But. Detective Howard, in the right place at the right time, he saves Uncle Lulu's life. But we know if he saved they bacon, we know it's going to come at a price, right? He's telling, look, Raquel, I'm done talking to you. You need to let me meet my son. You need to, you need to let me meet Kanan by all means. And I don't want your, your brothers and them trying to get hostile and all that shit. Because if they do, it's going to be some serious consequences behind that. So he's coming with a threat to Raquel, seriously. And he's telling her, look, I didn't help you too much too many times. You need to deliver on your end of the bargain, right? So she reluctantly agrees, or so we thought. And this is where you see the manipulation of Raquel. Like, 
the way her character, like the character development, like or not the development, I'm sorry, the way we start seeing how heinous these characters can be, it is 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 spectacular, right? Because a lot of times in shows, people try to make drug dealers the heroes, right? Like these superheroes, and like they just are these really good guys. They just sell drugs. And it's nearly impossible to really be a kingpin the way Raquel is trying to operate and be a good guy. It's going to be terrible things that you're going to, that that person is going to do, terrible shots that they're going to call. There's going to be heinous things that transpire. And she has to deliver that call even just for survival or just because she's become hardened and greedy from living in that lifestyle. And we see all of that display like perfectly in this episode for real. Like this is a brilliant episode. Um, Raquel reluctantly agrees for her, for Kanan and Detective uh, Howard to meet up, but she got a whole other plan up her sleeve, right? Um, also interesting, we see that Nicole's parents are trying to have, trying to have Jukebox pay for the death of their daughter. They know that she was overdosed on a drug that was linked to uh, Jukebox in some way. Right, so they don't care whoever got to go down for it. Somebody associated with Jukebox, if it's not Jukebox herself, got to go down for it, and they got to pay for Nicole's death. Um, Jukebox is still mourning Nicole's death vigorously. However, the police officer that's with Detective Howard, his partner, I forgot her name, she swoops in, and she's trying to develop a friendship or a bond with uh, Jukebox in order to get information on other things going on in the street. Right, she's trying to get information on if. Uh, the drugs really came from Kanan that uh, killed Nicole. And she's trying to figure out what happened to D. Wiz. So she's trying to sneak in on it, but she's also still playing a caring aspect or a caring. I think she really does care for Jukebox. But she's trying to figure out what's going on and trying to solve the murders that's been happening. Right? Um, Jukebox then talks to Rock. Rock tells her sometimes police are some of the best friends to have. You need them in, their, in your corner on certain instances. And she knows this firsthand from her relationship with, uh, with, Malcolm, uh, with Malcolm Howard, with Detective Howard. Even though she has a disdain for him, she knows that her having a prior history with him has saved her, saved her ass on several different occasions and saved her brother's life just then. Right? So this episode also, we see the unraveling of Symphony and Rock's relationship. And I think at some point... Symphony is probably going to become a casualty of war from dealing with Raquel. Whether it's, I think it's going to be at the hands of Unique and his crew. Because they just said, anybody associated with um with Raquel, gotta die. You know what I'm saying? Anybody, even whether it's Kanan, whether it's Unique. He don't care what age or what they're doing in their life. He don't care if they're in it or not. They gotta die. So I think Symphony is going to be a casualty of war. And it's, it doesn't help that Raquel, she's trying to keep Symphony out of her lifestyle. But... He keeps trying to interject because he cares about Raquel so much. But Raquel telling him, Rock, she telling him, look, that's a fantasy land. What we had going on, that's a fantasy land. This is the real life. This shit is real. You know what I'm saying? And But she's saying it so disrespectfully to him that he's getting pissed off. But I think he's going to try to reconcile one more time. Or even people seeing him at the hospital possibly being there with Raquel or whatever. It might lead to him getting killed as well. Um, and this is my prediction too. Because personally, I'm sorry, I have to look at the time. Personally, I think that Famous, um, uh, Sean, Famous, that's uh, Kanan's friend, I think something's going to happen to him from his association with Kanan. They might be trying to shoot at Kanan somewhere, somehow. Unique's crew might be trying to get at him and get Sean. And the reason why I think Sean, something's going to happen to Sean, because we don't see him come into play in the original Power. And we see that in the, in the original Power series, Kanan names his son Sean after Famous. So I think Famous is going is to die at some point. But I think he's going to be a casualty of war. Symphony and Sean. Maybe maybe, maybe both of them, but I believe one of them for sure is going to be a casualty of this war with Unique. So I'm really I'm interested to see how that dynamic plays out, right? So let's go on to the, to the, to the beefy part of this, uh, this series, of this episode. We see Uncle Marvin lose his shit, lose his top. Like he go crazy over the fact that he finds out that his daughter... Has a lesbian had a or has or had a excuse me had a, a lesbian relationship with a young lady by the name of Nicole. He is pissed off to the highest degree of pissivity. He going in her room, smashing up everything. He is pissed off, and all that's like, damn. Eric Kanan always has a way of revealing or making some some really messed up stuff happen, right? He is always the connection to some effed up stuff happening, right? He told her. Um, he, he told Marvin when they was getting ready to go on the block and, and 
Kanan found out he finna be on the corners now. He tell Marvin, turn off that damn music that he playing is whack. He can't be on the corner again after going to the corner listening to that. He say Jukebox probably got some stuff in her room that you could bump. Uncle Marvin goes in Jukebox's room. He finds the pictures and the video of, of, um, of Nicole and Jukebox. And he pieces it together easily. He sees that they had a relationship. And when Jukebox comes home, the way he addresses her and asks her, is she some type, is she some type of girl? You know, you know the F word. He is she some type of that? And then he starts to talk about Nicole. Even after he finds out Nicole is deceased, he's taught he starts to talk about her as if she's the scum of the earth. In such a foul manner, like Jukebox becomes enraged. He even says that, um basically re refers, he says that Jukebox, she gets that uh heathen activity from her mama and them. They nothing but heathens. And she and basically he says that it's good that Nicole is dead because she wasn't obeying God's will or whatever, right? So Jukebox goes in to question her, her dad and say, are you living God's will? You living it? Right? And basically like from him slanging dope to his people in his own community, killing folks, to him being an actual murderer, shooting at dudes and killing people, taking lives, she questions his morality for trying to question Nicole's for being gay, right? And we, and see, look, the 90s was an era, now, and I was born in 93, so I can't really, I was a small child in the 90s, growing up through the 90s. But I just remember the respect that, I'm going to tell you, black children, most black, most black children I know, when they came from a strict household, they had a respectful fear of their parents where they wouldn't talk back to them. They wouldn't even really challenge them in a certain way because they know it could mean severe, severe punishment. You know what I'm saying? Severe punishment. I'm talking about not just going to corner, not just um you're grounded. I'm talking about beating punishment. You know what I'm saying? But at this point, Jukebox becomes so enraged for him trying to make Nicole feel like a heathen. She spits on her own father. And when she spit on Uncle Marvin, I saw, damn, in any black household, Jukebox would have been beaten to an inch of her life in the 90s. See, he made today too. But I know back then, she might she would have been beaten to an inch of her damn life for spitting on her father. But the way the things that Marvin was saying about Nicole and making saying all type of despicable things about his daughter, the way he made her feel about being gay, and and and, and the way he talked about her deceased girlfriend, like and jukebox was so enraged that I I couldn't blame her for spitting on her father, but spitting is far as hell. That's the lowest thing you could do to a person. But at that point, she felt like her dad was probably the scum of the earth for talking about somebody that she loved as if, as if Nicole was the scum of the earth. So she didn't give a fuck. She didn't care at that point, right? And the way this scene, this, this scene is just played back and forth between the scene of Kanan talking to, I mean, Raquel talking to Kanan and instructing him on what she wants him to do. She's showing him basically how to become a hitter and a savage, but she's sending him on a hit mission. She's sending him on a hit mission to the ultimate to the ultimate degree. And the way she's doing it, she's manipulating her own son into killing his own father, right? By telling him that he's taking everything away. away. She's trying to take everything away from them, right? Now, as far as Kanan knows, that man is not his father. He don't know that. All he knows is that man is the police, and he's trying to um basically trying to send his whole family away, right? And so she's telling him she's using her son's love for her. I say he's trying to take us, he's trying to take all of us and everything we love down. You gotta take him out, right? She's using that to fuel Canaan because she know she knows Canaan has a love for her and his family to the point where he's at this point now where he gonna take out anybody that's a threat to what they got going on in his family. He don't give a fuck about none of that. He's gonna take them down. He's a kid, he's a small boy, he only has taken one life, but she knows he's at the point where he's willing to, he wanna be down so bad. And he didn't seen already some he didn't seen too much effed up stuff already, too much fucked up stuff already. Like he's really just ready to jump into the game here head first. And so when I'm seeing a the just position over is that the word I you supposed to use? When I see those scenes being played back and back between each other, it's like what the hell? It's it's so crazy the 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 way these parents are treating their children terribly, but in two different manners. We see that at, on one side, Uncle Marvin is becoming is coming to beat. He's coming to put hands on Jukebox, smacking her up, choking her into an inch of her life, literally choking her into the inch of her life. And we see Raquel basically sending her son on a mission that could be a death mission. 
she's sending him not not even just a death mission for Detective Thomas, but a death mission for Kanan. Because what the hell if Uncle, what if not Uncle Howard? What the hell if Detective Howard, what if he didn't kill Kanan in that, in that situation, right? He's sending her, she's sending her, she's sending her son to take a life, but also be put into a situation where his life could have been taken. So you see the neglect and the mistreatment of these two parents on two different aspects or two different angles. You're seeing it, right? Jukebox being beaten and talked to terribly and treated like she's the scum of the earth for being gay. Kanan is being groomed to be a killer and to, to handle his mother's dirty work or to tie up loose ends for his mother. And she's using manipulation to do it, right? Because... He doesn't even know he's going out to kill his own father. She don't want that relationship to, or the relationship status to be revealed so bad that she's willing to have Malcolm, Detective Howard, Malcolm Howard killed so that so that relationship is not discovered or unraveled. And then people even find out that she was messing with a police officer because she's going to look like a snitch. It's going to be a whole bad look for her. She don't want none of that to come out. She don't want Kanan to know. Kill this. But that's how result her her um um solution is for... Uh, Canaan to kill his own father and she don't give a damn how it happened. She don't care. She don't care about the, the fact that he's killing his father. She don't care nothing about that. Detective Howard got a go in her eyes. I'm like, this, but the, the, the scenes are so powerful. Like, right after Uncle Marvin is finished, he's finished nearly killing Jukebox by choking her, you see him start crying and start going to an emotion where he is like bawling tears and really just like going through it. But you still don't feel bad for him because you're like, damn, bro, you really was trying to beat your daughter and talk to her like she wasn't nothing. Like she was the, like the, the scuff at the bottom of your shoe. Like she wasn't nothing because she gay. You know what I mean? But the, those reactions is our reactions of parents. They can still be the reaction of parents today. But I know in the 90s particular, being gay was just so taboo. Like people was not letting that fly, especially within the black community for sure that I know. It just wasn't accepted at all. So it didn't, it didn't matter if you were a girl being gay or a boy being gay. Then. It just wasn't it wasn't accepted at all. And it wasn't accepted at all in that era so much that it is revealed in the previous episode that the dude that everybody thought was Kane is think is Kanan's father, Defcon, he was gay. And he just hired Rock as a beard for him. And he was so he wanted to keep that his sexuality disclosed so much. He allowed everybody to think that he was Kanan's real father because it was it would make him look like a man in people's eyes because it looked like, okay, you actually were having sex with a woman. You conceived the child with a woman, so you can't be gay, right? So I just thought it was just a great, like this show, was, it, the episode was shot brilliantly and it was written brilliantly, right? Because even up to this episode, we see Uncle Marvin beating on Jukebox, but we hadn't even seen him interact for real throughout the show at all. And I think that was done purposely. Right, I think that was done purposefully, or yeah, purposely or purpose, purposefully. It was done on purpose, right? Because they wanted the, the writers of the show, Courtney Kemp, executive producer 50, 50 Cent, they wanted us to show that Uncle Marvin really wasn't a parent to, uh, to Jukebox at all. All he did was provide a roof over her head, uh, food and put food in her mouth, but he really wasn't a parent to her at all. And I remember people bringing this up in the original Power. Kanan talked about how he held Jukebox down when Uncle Marvin, when his uncle kicked her out for being kicked out the house for being gay. So we know at some point, Jukebox is going to get put out. Either she, either she just, either by her own will, or she going to leave or whatever, because she know her dad don't approve of it. She going to get put out some other way. She going to get, she, somehow, some way, she ain't going to be in the house no more. I doubt at this point. After that shit, she ain't coming back in the house at all. After spitting on her father, and her father nearly choking her to death, she ain't coming back at all. I think that's going to basically, I think, heighten her relationship with the detective. I mean, with the, yeah, with the other police officer. Is she a detective too? I don't know. But it's going to heighten her relationship with her. But Jukebox ain't going to tell her her own family at all. She's not going to even tell her her father did that to her. But they're going to develop a close, she's going to develop a close bond with the police officer. And I think that's where her inspiration to be a police officer is going to come from. Jukebox later became a police officer. She was a, a crooked police officer, but in the original power, she was a police officer. So I'm thinking the inspiration is going to come from being around the uh, the female cop, the lady cop that's with Detective Howard. I got to find out. I'll I be forgetting her name, man. Damn. But the acting, man, it was just so brilliant. Also, I forgot to say this. We see that Unique's jacket comes into play, right? Because we saw that Uncle Lulu 
stole Unique's jacket out of his car when he was parking at a hotel or something like that. It's, or, it was somewhere that parking in his building where he lived or something. It was a building where he lived or something. Uncle Lulu takes the Unique's jacket. Unique came and puts on Unique's jacket when he shoots uh, Detective Howard in order to frame Unique for the murder of Detective Howard. Because Kanan ultimately meets up with Detective Howard and shoots him. Shoots him, and we hear another gunshot as the screen goes black. Right? He shoots him once, then we hear another gunshot while Detective Howard is on the ground, gasping for air, holding on to the gun wound. He's telling, and he's telling Kanan that Rock is playing you, but Kanan don't give a damn. His mother gave him an order, he going to carry it out. So he shoots Detective Howard, and we see the, sc the screen go black. But in the sneak peek, I see Detective Howard on a stretcher. So it looked like to me he survived that hit, that attempted hit. So they're going to have a lot more problems coming out. Right, Raquel? They're going to have to get the hell up out of there. The police, because Detective Howard is not going to play with Raquel at this point. He going to probably, he going to kill Raquel if he got to, just to get to Canaan. He's desperate for a, a transplant. And he also know this woman trying to take him out anyway. So he'll lock Raquel up or whatever. He don't give a damn. Right? But... He can't let Kanan know that he's the one that's doing it. Because Kanan ain't going to want to rock with him at all to give no transplant at that point. He got to do it in a subtle way. He's going to get, get back at Raquel in a subtle way. He's going to do it, and I believe he is. But he's still going to do it to where nobody knows it's coming from him. So that Kanan, he can try to establish a relationship with Kanan in some type of way. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. But it looked like he's going to survive from the sneak peek. But this episode, man, it was just done really well man like i said london brown's acting and arranged from his character like uncle marvin being violent and enraged but then crying after beating his own beating his daughter and and choking her into an inch of her life all of that like seeing him cry basically be on the verge of tears or not was he crying he wasn't crying when he's talking to rock but he was so emotional talking about all of this type of stuff like dealing with talking about his sister's um emasculation of him in a way man it was really a powerful scene I forgot to add this in too. We see that Rock and we see Rock, Uncle Lulu, and Uncle Marvin's mother, she's still living. I was under the impression that she was deceased the whole time. So it looked like Uncle Marvin took care of them. They while they were, while the parents was on drugs, they didn't die or nothing, though. They were just on drugs. The mother is in is in church. She seems to be reformed. She seemed to be cleaned up. Raquel comes to church. Like as a way, and it was really it wasn't about her to uh, beg for forgiveness. I don't think I I think it was, some of it was, but Raquel's a cold-hearted person. She didn't go to church after she killed her son's best friend. I think her going to church was for her to establish an alibi for um, when if Kanan was to kill Malcolm, Detective Howard, she can say it wasn't me. I was at church with my mother. And she can have an alibi for everybody to say she was at church. Even the mother says, Raquel, what you doing here? You ain't been here in a long time. Something going on. Something got to be going on that you hear, Right? And Raquel goes into a spiel where she's Rock trying to say, basically saying, hey, I got into this life from somewhere. And it was basically, she's saying, it's from y'all, from my parents, from you. The mama ain't trying to hear that. She said, you got into that lifestyle because that's what you wanted to do, Raquel. Ain't got nothing to do with me. And um, I'm the only person probably called Rock Raquel, but I like saying Raquel. But anyway, yeah, she basically like, don't put that on me. That was your own doing. And that's something that you got to deal with, right? So now, we go, I, I wanna, I'm interested to see like it's it's so they kept it hidden that Rock's parents or Rock's mother at least was still alive, and I think that was done for a reason. I think she's gonna come in and play a, a meaningful ro meaningful role as the series continues. But man, like raising Kanan is dope, especially after all the people were saying it was boring at the beginning of the series. Oh man, the beginning of episodes, people were like it's boring. It's not a lot of action, not a lot going on, a lot of filler stuff. I don't like it. It's boring. But I heard a lot a lot of people really liked it. But you had some people that were saying it was boring. After watching episode nine, are you not entertained? Are you not entertained after looking at that? That was a brilliant episode, y'all. Machiavelli Mills TV, y'all let me know what y'all think. Y'all, excuse me, y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. Y'all like the video, subscribe to the channel. Y'all donate to the cash app that I'm going to put in the, in the description. I appreciate y'all for rocking with me. Peace.